stepping through the different selections and you can see that when I make each selection it prints a message but it could just as easily you know be doing other things and then I give it some bad inputs and um, finally I hit number five and I quit out so let's see how we do this now in the feral book this this program doesn't exist anywhere this is just created out of my brain and I'm only using material from chapters two, four, and five. No object oriented, no GUI, of course. Just from two, four, and five, you could program for years without ever getting into the object oriented part. So let's go ahead and set up our menuing. Um, I'll, I'll create the class, call it simple menu. Go ahead and set up the main method. And basically, it might seem a little tricky, but um, if you just bear with me and read through the code, I think you'll get it. So first of all, the user is going to make a menu selection, so I want to store that menu selection. That's what this int is for. And then um, I want to uh, create a Boolean flag, because I'm going to have a main program verb follow here in a minute. So I say quitting equals false. And the reason I do that, uh, you'll see later on, is because it, it kind of self-documents the while test at the bottom of the loop. Okay, so we, that would be the loop control variable. So I'm, I want to use, um, for my main program loop, I want to use a do loop, which means that we're guaranteed at least one execution. And so I'll put my while test down here, but I'll Hold, uh, hold off actually putting the completed while test in there. Um, okay, so here I'm going to say selection equals uh, get user selection, which is a function that I'm going to write later. Try not to worry about the details, just say I want to get the user's selection. Okay, and I'm having tricky difficulty here. Oh, because <laughs> the IntelliSense is trying to help me out here. So basically, I've got to hit escape before I hit enter, or it thinks it's going to help me out. Sort of like Siri. <laughs> okay. So the red line under the get user selection simply means that it doesn't recognize it because I haven't written it yet. Okay. Next, I want to select based on what comes back from the get user selection. And so here's where I've thought ahead of time. I thought, well, I'll just throw four or five things out there so that we can make a quick menu. And each in each case, I'm going to call a static method that we'll create in during this video. And that will show you how you can um, so take a user's keyboard input and then jump to a particular function to get something done and then come back to the menu so the user can select as many times as many different things as you allow until the user actually exits out. So I just made up some functions, area calculator, volume calculator, date time display, pithy quote, and then I'm going to go ahead and exit here. and. I'm going to write uh, little static functions that are called stubs. And what that means is the functions don't really do what I want them to do in the end. They're just going to print a message. But it lets me set up the structure of the program so that I can call um, the actual functions and know that my code is at least working to that point. So the stub, just like a little you know, stubby thing, instead of a full function, it's just going to print a message, and that way I get some visual feedback that the function actually got called when 
I selected the menu item. Okay, and then in default, I'm basically going to say, hey, that's an invalid choice. I'm using the dollar sign for an interpolated string so I can stick the selector or selection right in the curly braces. And then, of course, every case uh, needs a, a break after it, unless you're trying to group cases together. But you got to have a break after the case and the default, or it's going to carp at you. And then outside of the switch statement, I'm going to uh, print a little message for the user. I'm going to press enter to continue, and then I'll issue a read line to stop the execution of the program until the user hits enter, giving them a chance to actually see what's on the screen. Um, if you don't do that, it'll blow by so fast the user won't see it, and then what's the point? Okay. So stop the presses. That's from the old days when the presses would print the newspaper. And the presses are running, and in comes a late breaking story, and, and they'd run down and yell, stop the presses, because they wanted to get it in that evening's newspaper. OK, so back to the while test. So I'm going to say not quitting. So do all of this stuff while not quitting. But inside the loop, if you look at case 5, if the user selects 5, then quitting equals true. And that means they want to quit out of the program. And so that's kind of the logic there. So the bang sign or the exclamation point stands for not. It f reverses um, the truth value of whatever that expression is in there. OK, now um, I, I just put in a return 0 statement, so I ran back up to the uh, main method signature and changed void to int because I'm actually going to return a value. We're not going to do anything with that value, but later on we might. OK, so now I'm going to go ahead and um, create a display menu routine. And in the display menu routine, I'm going to create an array of strings. And that array of strings will hold the different menu choices or the descriptions of the different menu choices. Okay, I'm using a tab character followed by one period space area calculator. And notice, I, since it's a string I'm going to display, I'm not going to display it in uh, like a function call, because it's for a human user who may not know the first thing about programming and doesn't care. We just want to make it a friendly menu so they can read and decide what it is they want to pick. And again, I'm not going to implement these all these functions. I'm just going to put a write line in each of these functions and display a message to the screen. Although, I think I will implement number four. Because in, in the end, it's just a right line anyway. But it, instead, of, instead of echoing pithy quote, I'll, I'll come up with a good pithy quote. OK, and then number five is going to be exit, of course. Now, notice the semicolon at the end of this, sen this statement. That's because the string array, menu choices equals, and the initializers and the braces is really a statement declaring uh, an identifier of string array type. And that's different than the enclosing curly braces that make up the code block. So the code block, when, you, when I'm done here, you'll see won't actually get a semicolon after it. It will enclose the entire function. OK, so what did I do here? Clear to clear the screen, right line, two tabs, all uppercase. Basically, I'm printing that my menu at the top and kind of trying to center it a little bit. And then I use a for each loop and I say string str in menu choices, right line str. So it's going to step through each one of those menu choices and print it to the screen. OK? Now, uh, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to build my stub uh, functions. So I've just put in that little comment called from main so you know where it's being called from. Not that you didn't know. Um, and then I see I'm just stubbing it out. I'm just saying, OK, I can call it. It will return. It'll print a little message. But I don't have to worry about implementing the area calculator now. 
or the volume calculator now or the date time display. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to get the structure of my program together. And you can see from this, if you wanted to add more menu choices, you'd go back up to display menu and you'd add another choice. And then you'd come down here and create another function. And that function would be called um, by the, the menu selection logic that I've yet to build. OK? So these were such short functions, I decided not to copy and change the wording. I just figured I'd just type them out directly because they are so short. Okay, now this one we do want to implement. This is the, I think, the pithy quote. So, uh, thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I got a good one. I'm a very famous baseball player. So that's the program in its entirety. And, oh, right, I'm sorry, this, the red squiggly. I never did implement the uh, get user selection. And this is a very important one because every time we call get user selection in the main program loop, it's going to immediately call display menu. Now, originally, I had the get user selection and display menu logic all in one single function. But it started to get big and unwieldy. And so I looked at it and I said, what can I excerpt out of this and make it smaller? And so I realized I could pull out the display menu logic and keep it clean and simple. And then focus on getting the user input and calling display menu when it made sense. And so it helped me to think through the problem. Because if you just keep making the function bigger and bigger and bigger, you'll just slow down to a crawl and pretty soon you'll hit a brick wall. And so you also want to use lots of smaller functions um, so that you can keep a function doing one main thing and make it easier to debug. And some people might argue, you know, you can overdo many small functions, but that's that's not an introductory concept. That's something that you address when you're doing something very, very specific. So this is a good way to do things. You start doing your functions, and then you go, this is getting too big and unwieldy. Is there anything I can do to minimize this complexity? OK, so let's give this thing a try and, see, and clean up any problems that I might have created. OK, none. So just look at that, and you can see I'm going to step through each of the selections real quick. And, and you can kind of see exactly what you saw at the beginning, but now you s see it after the code. That's it for this one. Uh, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.